This is Mark from Team How To, and we're teaching the masses how to. Hey guys, it's Mark from Team How To. Today I want to talk to you about another thing in Audacity. It's uh, the latency or, you know, the delay in the recording. Say you're trying to, to lay a track over another track and you just can't get the timing right. Well, a lot of uh, software will go in and fix that for you automatically. Uh, Audacity is free, and so they have some limitations, and that's one of them. It's otherwise just really awesome, but and it's a really simple fix if you know how, but uh, sometimes it'll make you pull your hair out. So what latency is, if you don't know, uh, latency is the time that the computer input takes to process the sound uh, so that it actually reaches the recording. And that happens uh, for a few reasons. One, the delay, if the mic is far enough away from the person or instrument being played that's a little bit of time and just the time the processor takes so your machine latency might be different than mine based on how fast your processor is so incidentally they call fixing that latency calibration or latency compensation so just real quick in case you don't have it audacityteam.org is where you would get audacity you could download the latest version here that's great now let's just go ahead and go to audacity and we'll get uh, get started here. Now, depending on whether your input is going to be direct or picked up by a microphone, it will determine a little bit about how we're going to calibrate. If it was direct, it would be, say, for instance, a keyboard or a guitar plugged directly into it. In this case, you're going to want to get a cable and run it from the input to the output, and that will simulate the input of a guitar or whatever. For this, for this calibration, we're going to need to do it that way. Now, if you're playing on an instrument uh, that's being picked up by the microphone you're just going to want to plug that microphone in at the point as close as possible to the distance you'll be using on a normal basis to record if you record say horns or something you might be multiple feet away from the mic whereas if you're singing or playing a guitar into the mic you might just be inches or or less uh, less away so and this can be very important because it will change the amount of time it takes the sound to reach the mic, depending on how far it is you're away from the mic. And it may seem minor and very insignificant. Man, it probably is it to your ears, but as it comes to processing, uh, milliseconds do matter. So let's jump right in and get this done. Yeah, let's assume that your microphone and all these things are set up right. You want your input microphone, you want it to be there, and you're going to need your output speakers to be working. So let's go up to Generate and down to Rhythm Track. And these are all the defaults that are in here. What I want to do for this, I'm going to turn this up just a bit, actually quite a bit. I'm going to do this to 116. I'm going to max that out. And this 80, let's just take this to 90. Those were the defaults that were in there. So let's just hit OK. And what this did, as you can see, is it created a track of just ticks, which is a metronome, real quick here. So you can hear how that sounds. And what we're going to do is let the microphone pick that up. So we have a very important step here that cannot be skipped. We need to check to make sure we're in dubbing mode, and sometimes it's a default that's set, and sometimes it's not. So let's just go down to from Edit to Preferences. And then we're going to check Play Other Tracks While Recording in the Overdub, and that's in the recording. It'll probably default to devices when I hit Recording, and go Play Other Tracks While Recording, and that's called overdubbing. And what that will allow it to do is it will play this track while we're recording another track. And if this is not checked, then it's like it sounds. It's just not going to play this out loud while we record the next one. And there's many reasons to do that, but for this one, we need it this way. So we hit OK here. And now we'll be able to pick the track up as we play. Now let's just go up here to Tracks. We're going to add a new track. We'll do a mono track. There we go. Now what we're going to need to do is just simply hit Record and let it do its magic. There we go. We just need a few samples. I'm going to I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to control scroll. You can also use this button up here to zoom in. We want to get in pretty tight. We're going to scroll all the way back to the beginning. And so you can see this is when the tick sounded and this is when the processor picked it up. So there's a considerable difference. Let's go to the next one real quick. And you can see that this one is behind this one by that much. So what we want to do is we want to find out exactly how much. So I'm going to take this left click and drag so we're right there so what i did was i just measured the distance from there to there and what i've got this down here set at is start and length of selection and when i do that it shows the distance from the start of it to the end of the selection just like it sounds and so what it's showing me is i've got 116 milliseconds from 
where it happens to where it knows it happens. So all we have to do is go in and calibrate that backwards. So we're going to take this number, 0.116, and because it's behind, which of course it's going to be behind, it's not going to be ahead. If it were ahead, it means it picked it up before it happened. And if that's happening, well, you've got an altogether better machine than me. So let's just go up to Edit, and we're going to go down to Preferences again. And this time, we need to be in Devices, and right here under Latency Compensation. And you can see this it's set currently to minus 180. Well, I need to add another 116 to that, so that would make that minus 80, minus 116, 196. So we want this to be a negative 196, it appears. We're going to hit OK. There we go. Now let's see. I will delete this track. Actually, let me just mute this track, and we'll see the difference that way. So we'll mute that track, and we're going to play this back. And let's see, generate another track, add a new mono track. There we go. And let's bring this back to here and record. There we go. Four clicks ought to be plenty. Let's go back here. And yes, you can see, look, let me scroll this in a bit and it makes it way more obvious. There we go. Looks like I'm actually a little bit ahead of it. That's interesting. Okay, so 196 was a bit extreme, so let's go ahead and find the distance between here and here. Like this, bring this all the way down, and if you wanted to get all three of these tracks, you need to just go up or down with it, like this, left click, pressed. So apparently I'm still 12 off, so I need to actually lower that by another 0.12, so let's go back to edit. Sometimes you're going to have to play around with this. And then, like I said, it's going to vary on a lot of reasons, so no big deal. We hit Preferences, we come back in, we decided we want to drop it by 12, so that makes it 84, so negative 184. All right, let's see what that does. So let's just go in and put a new track in, add new track, mono track, there we go. And make sure we're at the beginning, and let's do it. There we go, four clicks is plenty. Scroll this back. Now, if we look at this, it looks to me like, oops, it looks to me like we are lined up almost perfect. Look at that. That's beautiful. All the way from this one to this one. It's just right. Look at that. Perfect. Okay, excellent. So, what I did say I would do is I will bring my mic and move it. So, let's do one more of these. I'm going to take this in. I'm going to move my mic back about a f 18 inches or so just to see if that actually does or doesn't make any difference. So let's add another track. Mono track. So we start that there. There we go. Now I'm moving my mic. It's about maybe two foot. And here we go. There we go. Now you can see that it's way quieter, but... Let's scroll this back, and we'll see. Yeah, look at there. You can see the distance just for moving it a couple of feet. Let's see. I'll do the exact. So it looks like it's 8 milliseconds. So that's considerable for just a little bit. That would be enough to throw your timing off for sure. Another thing worth mentioning is if your computer one day has a lot of resources on, you know, being used, and the next day it's just a fresh restart and everything's going, you might have a different latency. So if you start to see those numbers are changing, it could be that your your computer's slowing down over time, or it was just being very much taxed a, a given day. So you might want to check that before you record any given day. Uh, it just might uh, it might save you some time. So there you go. That's all I got. Hopefully that helped. I hope uh, you will subscribe if you found it really helpful. And if not, you guys have a great life anyway. Okay? Thanks. Hey, did you remember to subscribe?